Good morning, Miramar, and welcome to the show. So happy to have you. I'm your host, Tamara G. Don't forget, you can check us out on all of our social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. And with us, we have our esteemed mayor of the City of Miramar, Mayor Wayne M. Messam. We also have a very esteemed guest with us as well. That would be the Council General to the Southern United States, Jamaica's Council General to the Southern United States, uh, Council General Oliver Mayer. So, so happy to have both of you here today. And I know that whenever I have these two powerful men, they are on a mission to do something. <laughs> <good>. so, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Tamron. Great to be here. Happy to be no here. problem. Yeah. And so we'll start with our mayor, Mayor Messam. You guys have a very special event coming up that you want to invite everybody uh, to. And I know this is right up your wheelhouse because it's dealing with health and taking care of yourself. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, you know, we're happy to have uh, the Jamaica High 5K event back in the city of Miramar for a second year. Um, I've been participating in this worthy event for several years before it even came to the city of Miramar. So kudos to the council general and his office for doing this event. I'll let him talk about the, the beneficiaries of the proceeds from the event, but we're inviting all of the community to come out this Saturday at Miramar Regional Park for a 7 a.m. kickoff of the 5K. <laughs> wow, 7 a.m. Mayor Messam, really? That early on a Saturday, huh? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. There's no better thing to do than on an early, brisk Saturday morning. We get in to get our walk, our run in before the South Florida warm, sunny weather brightens the day on Saturday. <laughs> and this is really important um, because, again, you have been the mayor that has been an advocate for um, you know, us doing better with our health, not just Miramar residents, but really South Florida in general. And I know that you probably are inviting everyone to come out. Yes, it doesn't matter your athletic ability. This is a truly a community event to um, anyone who is a part of the Jamaican diaspora, Miramar residents, friends of Jamaica, may have visited Jamaica. You see how beautiful the island and its people are. And this um, worthy cause is not only an opportunity to come out and do a fitness event, but afterwards we'll have a nice party with a purpose. <laughs> love it, love it. And so I would love to ask Council General Mayor now, how did this 5K come about and why did you all think that it was important to get people involved in you know, getting out and exercising? Well, you know, um, when I came in office in October 2018, I wanted, we, we wanted to put together a project that could involve uh, different members of the diaspora. And um, we started with the, the idea of having an exercise group every Saturday morning to get the community concentrating more on health. But also at the consulate, we cover 13 states. Mm -hmm. And we decided to um, work with five cities simultaneously to pull together this 5K. And so this year, we've actually stepped it up to six. We're going to have, um, simultaneously, we'll have Miramar for South Florida, Orlando, uh, Central Florida. We'll have Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, um, Phoenix, Arizona, and Birmingham, Alabama. Six cities simultaneously will have this 5K taking place. And all the proceeds will go towards supporting Jamaican clinics back home. We have already adopted five clin clinics, so all the proceeds are for a worthy cause. And as you heard, I mean, it's a, it's considered a fun run. We 90% of the persons who come will actually walk and will be dancing to good reggae music as, as, we, as we do the 5K. But it's also a, se a serious race for those interested in having a good time and we'll recognize the winners in the various categories so the serious runners like me MSM can come out and, and and expect a good run it's a timed event and we'll have a professional outfit there um, to recognize the, the the normal protocols with a fast race but as you heard at the end of the race we're going to have a, a nice um, reggae party we already have our race ambassadors papa san um, I Octane, two of the biggest names in reggae music. We also have Camila McDonald, a health guru, will be there. Um, Ed Robinson, Ali Cat, and, and a host of other artists who will be give, a, give a show at the end, free of cost. And we'll have refreshments, coffee, 
um, you know, Jamaican patties, uh, chicken, jerk chicken. So fun for the entire family. Come out and support. So I knew there was going to be a way that the Jamaicans were going to find a way to have a party <laughs> after you get it all <laughs> sweaty and tired at 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning. That, of course, is May 6th at Miramar Regional Amphitheater. And I wanted to ask this question, too, because I know a lot of people will come just into town specifically for this, right, General Counsel? Yes. Um, we already have close to 800 persons that have registered um, just for Miramar. And so we're expecting that number to increase. And so we invite persons to come out early. There's, there'll be a lovely warm-up session with a group called Soka Bounce. And we'll, we'll get you um, all warmed up before before the race. And so invite persons to get here from as early as 5.30, 6 o'clock. So you can be, enjoy the full festivities before the, the 7 o'clock start. Um, and, and again, at the end of the race, um, all persons will have an opportunity to get free Jamaican coffee. Um, you know, there will be refreshments there and... Um, for those of you who have not had Jamaican cornmeal porridge in a while, we will have that available for you, for you as well. So, so it now, promises to be very good. Are we sure it's going to be a <laughs> 7 a.m. start, though? We're sure, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely going for, for our on-time start, you know. And uh, we, want, we want the runners to know that this is a serious run. Mm -hmm. um, so we get the runners off first, and they will finish the race in what they're doing. 19 20 minutes the walkers now will take their time and as they go around we'll have reggae music playing right throughout the run so persons can have a good time interact catch up with people they haven't seen in a while this is just a, a must attend event for anybody who loves reggae music who loves bob marley who loves jamaica this is the time to come out and bond and have a good time and, and do it for our important cause giving back to jamaica and six communities at the same time will be having this race. I don't know if, if this has ever been done anywhere in the world. So people can come out and be a part of the historic run. I love that. And I love to uh, Mayor Messam that Council General said already 800 people have registered for the Jamaica High 5K, but it, that's 800 more eyes that will see Miramar who may not have uh, been to visit the fair city, our fair city. So how is this going to be an impact as well? Maybe, look, you never know when new businesses may come in or people may decide to move to Miramar, right? You know, we expect, you know, not only our residents, but, you know, friends of the race and just maybe curious individuals that may come for the race competing for the first time and may have never come to the city of Miramar. The Miramar Regional Park is one of South Florida's best Park is the home of our uh, Miramar Amphitheater, our aquatic center. We have ball fields and the soon to be um, open 9-11 memorial that will be at Regional Park. So it's a staple of our community and it's more than adequate to, ac to accommodate thousands of individuals. And what's so great about this race, you know, typically runners prepare for 5K races. They get up early, they go to the race, Whatever they finish, they get their medal and they leave. It's kind of clockwork, automatic. But this race is much, much more. You have everything in your traditional race with the 7 p.m., with 7, excuse me, 7 a.m. start, finished with the competitive race. But the camaraderie after the race, the festivities after the race, just, you know, the music, the culture, um, the entertainment, um, to be able to force worthy cause is such a great event. It's one of my fam fam uh, favorite races. I do many 5K, 10K, half marathon races, but this race is unique in of itself. And we've invited uh, many individuals from the running community to experience it. And we're also just asking just the lay individuals to come out. Just a, it's, it's a very non-intimidating atmosphere um, because there are so many other individuals that just may be walking or just jogging or going at their own pace. So it's, a, it's an event that you can do it based on however you feel. You'll be among great company and you're supporting a wonderful cause. All right. And how can people register for it, Council General Mayor? All right. So it, you, you go to Jamaica-5krun.com. That's Jamaica, H I the number five, letter K, run.com. And, and when you go on the website, you will see all six locations. Um, so you can, the persons listening here can select uh, Miramar and you go on, you register, you can set up a team. 
if you would like. We have over 55 teams already registered. Nice. So you can get your team. We're going to be giving a, <laughs> a special prize for the, the team who can assemble the most um, team members. So they'll get a special prize. The top, the top five teams will be recognized. And so it's jamaicahigh5krun.com. And if you don't, if you don't remember that, you can go to visit the, the consulate general of Jamaica Miami page on, on on Facebook or Instagram or my personal page, Consul General Oliver Mayor. We'll have all the details there. Very easy to get started and um, register today and be a part of another historic run. I would like to thank Miramar for their ongoing support. They continue to do an excellent job as a city. Kudos to Mayor Messam and, and his entire team. And it's, it has, they have just made it very easy for us to participate, to be there. Everybody is friendly. Everybody cooperative. And the spirit there is just a nice, true Bob Marley, one love style from you enter the gate to when you leave. You feel good about life when you leave this event. Oh, man. I, I can't wait for people to sign up. Again, it is JamaicaHigh5KRun.com, JamaicaHigh5KRun.com. This coming Saturday, May 6th at the Miramar Amphitheater, uh, Miramar Park Regional Park, um, and that address is 16801 Miramar Parkway, 16801 Miramar Parkway. Mayor Messam, you have a team, I assume, set up, Yes, right? I do have a Mayor Messam team. So if anyone who's not forming their own team, you can feel free to join the Mayor Messam team. But the most important thing is just to register. That's what's most important, to register. And when you register, bring five friends with you. <laughs> well said. Register you know and bring five friends with you. Sounds good. All right. So again, you've got the run starting at seven o'clock this coming Saturday. And right after that, it is going to be a party. You're going to be able to enjoy Jamaican cuisine. You've got free uh, music that is going on. It's going to be a concert going on. So it should be very nice this coming Saturday, May 6th at Miramar Regional Park, 16801 Miramar Parkway. Again, if you'd like to register for the run and bring five people with you, as Mayor Mensum said, you can go to JamaicaHigh5KRun.com. Thank you so very much, Mayor Messam. Um, we also have with us the Council General, Jamaica Council General to the Southern U.S. Uh, Council General Oliver Mayor. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we know that you have... Uh, many places you could be, but we appreciate you coming to the city of Miramar. So thank you. And I, and before you go, I ask you to just put up the high five sign. This is what we do. Okay. Everybody at the race, you put up the number five. High five. High five. High five. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching Good Morning Miramar. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back. I'm your host, Tamara G. Don't forget, you can check us out on all of our social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. And staying with us today, we have our esteemed mayor, Mayor, uh, of course, Mayor Messam is here with us and Wayne M. Messam, in case you don't know our lo lovely mayor. And we also have with us Black Violin. They are here along with Corrine Freeman. She is the VP of Black Violin's Foundation. We're so happy to have them here with us. You guys have something special going on, but we would love for Mayor Messam to tell us, you know, a little bit about how he got involved with Black Violin. Well, you know, we're really excited to partner with Black Violin and their amazing event that's taking place at the Miramar Amphitheater. And you're going to hear a lot about it during this segment. Uh, but when my office uh, was in communication with uh, Black Violins about this event, you know, we were just ecstatic, you know, to have the opportunity to um, just to partner. Um, you know, their story is so amazing, especially um, having a very unique and, and unique and, and uh, one of a kind um, experience in the city of Myanmar and to see them grow as artists and not just grow as artists, but, you know, their presence of mind to give back to the community and to reach back to youth to the next generation is not only to be commended, but it's something that we want to ensure that the public at large is aware of and so that we can get even more support so that we can reach more young people. Excellent. Um, and for you who don't know Black Violin are, they are Will Baptiste and Kevin Sylvester, Dillard, uh, proud Dillard High School graduates <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale, who have traveled the world 
uh, bringing their type of music, uh, classically trained, both of you, but, you know, infusing that hip hop, that R&B and the classics all in one. Um, I saw one of the last shows that you guys did uh, at the Parker Playhouse and it was amazing. I think that was right before COVID. So um, what have you guys been doing uh, since, you know, you're getting back into the swing of things? And we'll start with Will first. Well, we just got back from performing at, um, at Dominica. It's a Creole festival. This is a uh, Kev's hometown, Dominica. So uh, we just got back literally yesterday. And it was an amazing experience, not only because it's, it's home. Like, even though this is my first time being there, it felt like home. We were very much welcomed. And, and it was great to kind of do that. And uh, before that, we did like a seven-week tour. So we've been back for about a few weeks now. So right now, we're just kind of, you know, just back home, just hanging out with the family, just kind of laying it back and just really trying to get in the swing of things. And we got a new album that we're working on. And a new children's book. Um, this foundation, this project um, um, is something really, really special to us. So we've been really, really focused on this, this foundation, particularly the festival um, that's coming up. So, you know, that's where we're at. <laughs> we'll be talking about that soon. And Kevin, so you went, you got the chance to go home and now you're back uh, just kind of doing some downtime with the family. How is that? Because I, I don't know if a lot of people realize that, you know, once you become a touring musician, you probably aren't home a lot. No, I mean, that's the hardest part. You know, I always say that, um, you know, they, I get paid to travel. Um, I perform for free, you know, but leaving the family all the time is always the hardest part. Um, but it's hard to do what we do without, you know, taking it on the road and, and, and letting the everyone experience it. Um, so, you know, my oldest, who's graduating, um, she graduated in Western um, High School and she's going to FAM. Um, she told me, her and I had a conversation. We're talking about it, about just like our lives and how much we tour. And I was saying, you know, we play a hundred something shows a year. So she was like, you know, dad, you probably was gone maybe about eight years of my life. You know, she's 17 and she said it so, so strongly. And I was like, man, you know, that's, that's true. And then, um, but she was like, yeah, but it's worth it though. I completely understand what you was doing and I get it, you know? And I was like, so I'm like, okay, you know, it's, we were gone a lot, you know, most of the sacrifice are with our family, but you know, it's just good to see, you know, at the end of it, at least that at least my oldest, you know, appreciates the journey and appreciates the sacrifice and understood that it was for the greater good. So it is a difficult thing to do, but it's all about trying to balance them together and, and make it work. Oh, my gosh. Well, if you're just tuning in, we are speaking with Mayor Wayne Messam, along with Black Violin. That would be Will Baptiste and Kevin Sylvester. And we also have Kareem Freeman on. She is the VP of Black Violin Foundation. Uh, if you have never seen Black Violin, shame on you. Um, but <laughs> they are amazing. Uh, the fact that you guys even were able to uh, transform classical music because you're both classically trained. Um, and turn it into a genre that people love to hear. I mean, you could, I've heard you guys do some amazing things with some of the hip hop songs and uh, even the classics, just kind of putting your own spin on it. So uh, thank you very much for that. But you decided to start a foundation and tell us a little bit, Corinne, about that foundation and what you guys have coming up this weekend. Absolutely. So Black Violin Foundation was created by these two lovely gentlemen that you see here. Um, I happen to be Will's wife, myself and Ann Cap's wife are the people who organize and orchestrate the foundation on a day-to-day -day basis. And the focus of the foundation is working with youth in their communities to continue their music education in creative and innovative ways uh, with a very specific focus on Black, Indigenous, person of color youth, uh, because we are vastly underrepresented in the classical arts um, and ensuring that they know that it doesn't just have to be music of old, but that they can infuse their own essence into it and do it in a way that's never been seen before, very similar to that of Black Violin. Wow. Uh, and so on Sunday, May 7th, we are having our very first Dreamer Arts Festival. Uh, it's from 2 to 6.30 p.m. Um, and the focus, of course, is on young musicians. We have three student musician groups that will be performing. Dillard High School will be performing. Um, Bethune Elementary School will be performing and so will North Andrews Gardens. Our 26 intersection youth will be performing. Uh, and then we'll have performances by uh, Alexander Starr and the Golden People, Sons nice. of My Street, and of course, Black Violin. Nice. And so how can people get tickets to this event and where is it going to be held? Oh, so you can get tickets uh, at our website, www.blackviolinfoundation.org. Um, and you'll see a link to register for the event and it will be held at the Miramar Regional Park Amphitheater. 
Amazing. Again, give out that website, please. It's www.blackviolinfoundation.org. Perfect. And so Mayor Messam, obviously when they can't, you know, everyone in the city knows that you are all about health and wellness, but you, I know you love the arts as well. And so uh, when you were, uh, I guess, approached about being involved in this, uh, this was probably a no-brainer, right? Well, of course, you know, in addition to the health and wellness um, efforts, um, uh, many of the residents may have heard in previous program is that the, the Miramar Amphitheater is my brainchild. You know, I, I saw the opportunity for Miramar to build a one-of-a-kind or unique venue that will be able to infuse culture into our community. And when you take the uh, the artists like the Black Violins and all of the performers that will perform this weekend, it, it really is manifesting that vision to be able to bring the community together through arts and culture and making Miramar a cultural destination. You know, Broward County is one of America's uh, most desired uh, spots for touring, uh, particularly for our beaches and our great weather. Uh, but we want to expand uh, tourism in Broward County through the arts. And when you look at our very diverse community, whether it's the African-American community, Caribbean community, our, our, our art forms are just so great. And when you, when you take an instrument like the violin, um, the, 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 I guess the ordinary uh, perception of the violin is classical music um, in terms of orchestras or those types of fine arts performances. But when you, you know, when you, when you get people of color, um, an instrument like that, not only do we perform among the best as it relates to um, the classical art form and what it's known for, but when you bring our culture into it, um, you can take that same instrument and play a hip hop song, a reggae song, uh, you know, um, any type of genre uh, that, it, and then that now begins to attract our youth because that's the music that they listen to. And they now can believe that, wow, I can play that instrument too. I wanna learn how to play that instrument just like they are. And that's what's so great about the foundation. That's what's so great about black violins and how they're extending and reaching back and giving back to our community. So it was a no brainer. Awesome. Well, again, if you would love to attend, you can get those tickets at blackviolinfoundation.org. It is happening this Sunday, May 7th from 2 to 6 p.m. at the Miramar Amphitheater. Uh, the address for that, again, is in the Miramar uh, Regional Park, 16801 Miramar Parkway, 16801 Miramar Parkway. You can check that out. Um, Corinne, I wanted to ask if there are any students out there who are interested uh, in learning to play, as Mir just mentioned. Um, you know, or possibly learning more about Black Violin, can they also go and sign up at the uh, website? Absolutely. Go check us out. We have a grant and instrument access program. We actually just accepted 31 new youth in our, into our program in 2023. Um, so apply, check that out, and link up with us so we can help get you the resources that you need to continue to thrive. Sounds good. All right. So I want to ask this question quickly of Will and Kevin. So Will Baptiste, your um, favorite concert that you did is Black Violin, which where would that be most memorable? Most memorable concert. Uh, wow. That's, uh, you guys have traveled the world. So. <laughs> <laughs> be, you know, be I would honestly and be thinking on yours because you're coming next. <laughs> I would honestly have to stay in Harlem, man. We did the Apollo, you know what I mean? That's That was probably, because it still resonates to me till this day. You know, we grew up watching Apollo, so to be on that stage and, you know, so to rub that log, yeah. right, and, you know, the crowd <laughs> going crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and the crowd was going crazy for us, you know what I mean? At one point, Monique had to, like, calm the crowd down, like, come on, y'all, we got to go on with the show, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So it, it's... It's one of those moments that, you know, we'll never forget, man. That's, that's my favorite moment, you know, performance for sure. And Kevin, mm -hmm. what about yours? And thank you for all that you did during the summer camp for the Miramar kids oh, yeah. when you used to teach violin uh, during our summer camp. So thank I love, you. I love, I love that summer. I still, that was such a good time being able to do that. And, um, and thankfully, you know, Miramar was, was hope, um, gracious enough to have me as a, as a teacher. So um, I love that. But, um, you know, my favorite performance, um, the Apollo was really good. That was super memorable. We won three shows in one day. And I remember just feeling like it was unbelievable, like pinch me, you know, I, I it was just, 
crazy. But I have to say the other day, Sunday, I just played in Dominica. That was very memorable for me. I never played there before. I never, you know, and I have, you know, tons of cousins, both my mother and my father's side of there. So it's just like everyone was my cousin and it was really a vibe. So that was, I will remember that show for a long time. And then the other one that I'll say that sticks out is probably um, when we went to um, Iraq and performed for our troops in Iraq. And, and we were like soldiers for a week, you know, um, you know, touring around in different bases. And I just remember their, their the troops energy towards us when, when they, when we, they saw us show up and then we brought something really different to them. We risked our lives to come to see them and to play for them. And I'll never forget their response and reaction to it more than anything and it's kind of like why we do it you know so there's been so many memorable ones but that one's the one that jumped out at me when you said it well i can tell you that dillard high school of the performing arts in all of south florida we are so proud of you guys so thank you very much for all you do black violin thank you mayor messam for uh, getting behind this initiative. And again, thank you to Corrine Freeman, who is the VP of Black Violin Foundation uh, for the information on the showcase that is gonna be coming up this coming Sunday, May 7th at the Miramar Amphitheater. Again, it is inside Miramar Regional Park, 16801 Miramar Parkway. And thank you very much, all of you for being here and Black Violin, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I wanted to add also, this is a free event as well. It's a completely free event. So all you have to do is register. What? Free <laughs> is for me. All right. Yeah. And everybody else. So free event. Perfect. Free event. So again, go to blackviolinfoundation.org. They just want to register you to register so they'll know how about how many people to prepare for. But again, blackviolinfoundation.org. Free event this Sunday, May 7th at the Miramar Amphitheater right inside the Miramar Regional Park, 16801 Miramar Parkway. Thank you so much, Mayor Messam, for this. Thank you, Black Violin, and thank you, Corinne Freeman, the VP of Black Violin Foundation, for being with us today. Until next time, I'm Tamara G. See you.